Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the webinar Menus Implementation in IBM Rational Hat. It's part of a webinar series program organized by Royal Cyber for increasing awareness and sharing benefits of IBM Host Access Transformation Service or HAT. This webinar focuses on the menus, their types, Royal Cyber different menus implementations according to the client needs and project specification. In the end, we will demonstrate the development of a menu via web server. I am Yasir Hassan, and with me I have our head specialist, Mr. Asif Hussain and Mohammad Imran. Thank you very much for your overwhelming response. Let us start with the agenda. We will start off with the brief introduction about us, that is Royal Cyber. We will move on with the discussion on the IBM Rational Heads tools. In the next section, we will touch upon the types and variants of navigation menus. Then we will present sample of our different menu implementation, the situation in the particular projects which led to the eventual menu design. We will conclude with the demonstration of development of HATS menu implementation with a web service. We will try our level best not to get too technical overall, but the last section obviously requires some development background. Let us start with the brief introduction about us. Royal Cyber is a modernized e-business solution provider. We are IBM premier business partner, IBM authorized trainer, and Microsoft certified gold partner, and we have presence in many, many countries across the globe. Since the company's inception in 1997, our experts have been leaders in providing training and consultancy of IBM Rational, WebSphere, Tivoli, Lotus, Cognos, and Microsoft Family Solutions to businesses worldwide including many Fortune 500 companies. These are a few of our objectives as you can see on the screen. Basically we strive to create win-win situation for our clients and help our customer achieving the best ROI at minimum cost. This is our global footprint. Uh, we are headquartered in Chicago we, and we have office, offices and development center across North America, Asia, Europe, Africa, Middle East as you can see in the slide. Here is our brand portfolio. As you can see we have covered all the possible bases with our solutions from enterprise modernization to database servers. As you can see, in enterprise modern, uh, modernization, we have IBM Rational Hats. In databases, we have SQL Server, MySQL, DB2. We also have Oracle in our repository. And then in e-commerce, you can see we have WebSphere Commerce. In Microsoft, we cover almost all their solutions. So basically, it's a comprehensive coverage of you know every possible need, every possible IT need of a customer. OK, now we will <coughs> discuss, excuse me. Uh, discuss IBM Rational Host Access Transformation Services or HATS uh, briefly. Rational HATS is a premier IBM product suite that is inarguably the best tool for presenting old green screen applications built on uh, legacy servers like IBM I, IBM Z in modernized manner, you know, very rapidly and efficiently. HATS modernized version can be prepared for various output mediums. You don't need to make any changes in the existing application. Basically, the green screen application are very mature. They have passed the test of time. So uh, the idea is that it stays on the back end working as it is working for many years. So we don't you know, make any changes uh, on the green screen. Rather, what we do, we make changes on the front end. That is the heads, the heads layer. Uh, I mean, it's obvious, it goes without saying that you don't need to migrate data uh, when you're implementing uh, hats on top of a green screen application. And it is very hard to train people on old obsolete technology. So moving to hats permits new resources to come on board quickly because they don't need to learn the you know, old uh, interfaces. They, just, they, you know, they, have, they work on the familiar interface that is UI of the day. So you, it's very easy uh, to support your green screen application if you have, uh, you know, had implemented on top of it. Okay, 
So data from legacy server like system I and system Z can be used as at various places once you have uh, implemented the hats layer. Uh, data once processed by hats can be deployed for web application, rich clients, portals, and mobile devices. You can also create and consume web services for back and forth communication with any other system, database, or you know whatever the situation is. Uh, head does not only display the content of green screen application on the modernized interface. It's not always about you know just displaying the content of green screen and you know direct directly mapping it on the uh, modernized interface. There are so many things that hats can do, like uh, modernizing green screen per the recent UI standard. You can use macros uh, to uh, you know cover the functionality of multiple screens into one screen. You can apply customization and uh, there are so many other techniques to show green screen data in organized and friendly manner. Advanced controls and widgets can also be used like calendar controls which were naturally uh, absent in the green screen because there was no concept of GUI in that time. Uh, hats can also be used for creating mobile version for specific devices like iPad, iPhone, uh, your Galaxy devices you, or even the barcode readers, you know, the very special purpose devices. Basically, it all depends on the business, business need of the customer. This is the overall architecture of the HATS implementation. You can see that IBM i server is used for the green screen application. The HATS application is deployed on the uh, WAS application services, uh, application server, it's WebSphere application server. And then once you know we have built this uh, platform, it can be used on various places, uh, various browser, various devices via HTTP protocol, web services, or JDBC connection, or whatever. Okay, before I hand over the mic to my next fellow presenter, Asif, let me remind you that this webinar only covers the menu implementation in Hats. This obviously is just a fraction of the overall Hats features. Uh, listed on the screen are few of our training session details. Uh, the distance learning workshop, uh, that's the one on the top. It's a two-day long workshop where you will learn the HATS development from scratch. Other than that, we also offer online and on-site instructor-led training. The curriculum for the workshop is fixed, the distance learning one. But for the ILT sessions, we can have customized curriculum as well. and. You, you know, once uh, you register for the ILT, you can uh, ask us to uh, build the customized curriculum, including uh, items other than uh, rational hash as well. So you can find the URL for each in the ch chat box, and we will also provide it to you in the email. So over to Asif. Thank you, Yasser. I will start with the introduction to different navigation menus implemented in HATS or uh, in general web development and their benefits. In the context of computer applications of all types, menus are options that permit a user to perform various operations for uh, retrieving information or initiating a uh, functionality. Generally, we associate the menus with the mouse click, but in a broader scheme of things, the menus could be accessed by choosing, selecting something, or even providing some text. Menus are uh, essential, perhaps the most important component of manual driven programming which is arguably the norm of the day. Manuals make the navigation easy and make the screen look less cluttered. There are numerous types of manuals and their subtypes. Even on the modern devices like smartphones, 
menus have not lost their importance. The way they are presented is changed, but menus are still there. There is no menu that can be called the best. It is always the situations like interface, number of options, con consistency with the application, uh, client requirement, device being used, and etc. that needs to be considered while deciding the menu to be implemented. <clears throat> like many entities in computing, menus also lack standard definitions. However, uh, essentially there are two types of menus, static and dynamic. Let us discuss each one of them briefly. Static menus have fixed content and ideally are not supposed to be expanded or collapsed as all the content uh, contents are displayed all the time. As every option is available, so there are no levels to explore for navigation. The contents are not picked dynamically, so they are, there are no changes for a particular user type or situation. Static menus through a simple but uh, not bad, uh, they, they, they are simple but not bad all the time. Uh, there are certain benefits of static menus like they are uh, computationally very light, they look simple, programming for static menus is also easier. However, uh, there are few drawbacks as well, like lack of flexibility as they are fixed, so the screen space has to be allocated to them all the time. If their roles and rights are dynamic, static menus are very hard to implement. Uh, in that case, if uh, there is some change required, it is always necessary to open the code and go through the whole development cycle of changing the code and reviewing and testing it. If the contents are known in advance and are not expected to be changed and there are no or very less changes in menu items per user role and rights, then going for static menus does not, uh, does make sense. Furthermore, if the development time is very short, then static menus come in handy as they can be developed very quickly. <clears throat> dynamic menu, on the other hand, as the name suggests, is dynamic and may change at runtime according to particular situation like different user rights, different states of state of options. For instance, right click on a MS Word file has different options as compared to say MS Paint file. Through its various implementations, dynamic menus can be programmed to appear as and when needed. Their depth can be of any level. Menu contents can be obtained through interfacing with database or with some web services. Dynamic menus also have their advantages and disadvantages. Major benefits are their flexibility. Dynamic menus give user an ability to place the menus anywhere on the screen in, in some cases. For uh, future enhancements in the menu and changes according to rules and rights of the user do not always require programming of the whole thing. Major uh, disadvantage uh, di are disadvantages are complexity to develop and uh, possible performance degradation on slower bandwidth. <coughs> if the contents are not known in advance, 
or there are frequent changes in the menu items or the menu items are different drastically for user base then going for dynamic menus is better than static there is no silver bullet as for as as far as menu choice is concerned it is very important to analyze carefully and uh, don't go for the over for the overkill if static menu can work adequately again there is no specific definition but generally the menus like uh, menus can be divided into uh, these subcategories context or pop up menu drop down or pull down menu uh, free menus uh, let us discuss each one in detail in the coming slides <coughs> This is the most commonly used navigational menu type where we have a heading item on top which may or may not be clickable and then we have child menus. The levels of drop down could be any but usually it is considered uh, friendly to have three to four levels at max. Context of Can you hear me now? Okay. So, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, there were some network problems here due to which we my, the connection dropped for for a few seconds and my voice was not reaching you guys. So let me continue from the slide we were on. It was about context or pop-up menus. As the name suggests, pop-up, uh, it, it pops up uh, when user performs particular action like mouse click or hover and uh, context is very important in this case as the same operation based on the situation, different situations can have different options like uh, a right click operation on a file and a folder gives different options. <coughs> Tree menu is another very important menu type. It works like uh, explorer option in Windows. It is considered useful as user can expand or collapse the section they want to work on particularly. There are various reasons why we need menus in HATS applications. Obvious reason is modernization. As the green screen application is modernized, menus are essential part of the modern GUI design they call WIMP, Windows, Icons, Menus, and Pointers. It is very difficult to navigate on green screen due to lack of GUI. HATS finishes the need for the user to remember the IDs to access the menu items. It makes application user friendly and makes training very easy which is a very cumbersome task on green screen. <coughs> Sources of menu. Choosing a specific menu type depends on lots of variables like need, situation, client's requirement, etc. Uh, this slide provides an introduction to the process of choosing a particular type of menu but it is only an introduction there are lots of factors on which such decision making has to be performed so if the menu is static that means for all the users and situations the menu remains the same having fixed menu items and actions we can go for direct mapping of green screens in fact, direct mapping of green screens is mutually effective in dynamic or static 
both types of menus. <clears throat> With static menus, all sorts of client-side menu scripts like tree, drop-down, or any other menu can work with fixed HTML, JavaScript, etc. While for dynamic menus, the dynamic items uh, behaving based on the situation and user roles along with direct screen mapping, we can create menus with the data collected from DB calls, database queries that means and we can collect data by running hash macros or we can use a web service to get the, the menu items and their actions for certain users session. <coughs> JDBC and web service uh, this is the slide about like how we can use them to get the contents of a menu. So here's a way of creating dynamic menu. Uh, this is how we can produce a menu that will display options based on the user's roles and privileges. When a user signs in, Hats executes a piece of code that does dynamic menu generation. That means sign in triggers a procedure that connects to the host system's database or calls a web service that responds with the many options available for the current user. This record set or XML response is read by the hash code and based on it the hash application generates HTML menus. Directly mapped menus. Uh, directly mapped menus are simple menus, equally useful in dynamic as well as static hat menu generation. In this method, we generate menu screens on the fly based on the menus on green screen. So this means whatever menu options are being displayed by green screen in, in a certain situation, the hats modernized web screen shows the same options. The only difference it creates is in the look and feel of the screen and the uh, clickable behavior of the option. These directly mapped menus can be created by two approaches. One, uh, just, just like any other screen in hats, one is uh, screen customization uh, screen customization based and the other one is default rendering. For screen customization to take effect on a particular green screen, developer sets screen recognition criteria that HATS uses to match menu screens or in fact any host screen. <coughs> host screens can be recognized by any combination of criteria including how many input fields or total fields are on the screen, the coordinates of the cursor's position uh, and uh, or text strings on the screen within a defined rectangle or anywhere on the screen. So any, any uh, screen, anything on the screen can be treated as a screen recognition criteria to take effect a particular screen customization. When a host displays a screen, HAT searches to see whether the current host screen matches any of the screen recognition criteria developer has set in. Any screen customization in the project, uh, it, it, if HAT finds a match, the defined actions for the screen customization are performed. Else, if the screen is not recognized, Global rules are applied and based on them, the screen or menu is modernized. Now we'll see how macros are used for menus. And uh, macros are actually, macros are easy to generate in hats and are very powerful. You can skip and combine screens 
or enter data on behalf of the end user. Any series of keystrokes can be captured in a macro and can be played whenever required. Macros can help us navigate to a certain screen when triggered. For menus, macros are pretty useful too. Based on the nature of macros used in hats for menus, they can be divided in two segments, pre-menu macro and post-menu macro. Here you can see a pre-menu macro. A pre-menu macro is described in diagram, uh, is used to, this, which is described here in diagram is used to collect menu options data from several, several screens before hats can use it to generate a modern styled menu uh, by JavaScript or by any other means. So what it does is it, it, uh, it is uh, on a certain situation a, a macro is triggered and it, it uh, goes through a certain set of screens and collects different menu options from the green screens and put them into some sort of an array and then it displays it in a certain format uh, later on when needed. So this macro is used to collect the menu items data. <clears throat> Here you can see a post menu macro. While uh, a post menu macro is the one that is used to accomplish the actions required to be done as the result of the chosen menu option. For instance, on clicking a menu option, the application has to jump to a certain screen that can be made available on the host after passing through four or five different screens and providing different keyboard inputs to get onto target screen. Post menu macro will provide all the required inputs to the host and bring the target screen in action. Now we will discuss the strategies one needs to uh, take for mobile uh, devices uh, for the implementation of menus. So here you can see, uh, in fact we will discuss all sort of strategies for all, sort, all sorts of devices here. Uh, here you can see a situation, uh, this is an actual situation we, we experienced and provided solution. In fact all, all the uh, solutions we will discuss here are actual solutions and we will uh, discuss them that what was the problem, what was the situation and how we provided the solution. So it's, it's, a, it's a simpler one, here it, 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 in this situation we had limited number of menus, in fact uh, single menu was there and uh, there was very little variation according to the user types and there were no sub menus. <coughs> so it was a pretty simple menu as you can see on the screen. What we did, we fetched the menu items available on green screen and applied customization technique to show those items as GUI based icons. Icons are shown instead of textual statements we had in green screen for the user navigation. Green screen is replicated but the customization to show the icons of the items uh, available to the user. So you can see here uh, that this was the transformation we made and instead of each menu item that was a textual menu item, we uh, replaced it within, with an icon and these icons are shown on the screen based on the uh, user's role actually because the green screen was showing uh, these, I, these menu items based on the user's role. What we did, we, we replaced the, that uh, individual menu item with a single icon and so we, we didn't have to do any dynamic uh, programming for the menu by ourselves and all, all the role based uh, programming was done at the green screen as it was. So green screen shows the menus according to the user's role and rights and we display them as is. 
but in modernized manner, of course. However, this is a relatively simpler situation. Life is not always that merciful, as you will see in the subsequent examples. <clears throat> in this case, we had text-based menus on the green screen with an ID written with each under each menu. We had some menus, you may call it a nested menu as well. User has to access the screen by providing the ID in the provided field at each level. The menus are populated based on users' roles and rights. We implemented the direct mapping with green screen. Green screen is already showing the menu and taking care of the user roles and rights. It means uh, it is only showing those menus to the user which he or she can access. So we replicated the menu screen as is but in modernized manner of course. So this is how the modernized screen, screen look like. Here you can see the modernized menu. User can still access by providing IDs, but the menu items are clickable as well, which makes it very convenient for the end user to browse through the application. <coughs> there's, there's this another situation, uh, another case. In the green screens application, user provide, uh, users were providing, provided with the, the menus on the main screen. The menus available to the users were according to the roles and rights at each level. However, at the same time, few menu items were fixed for the entire user base. <coughs> Considering the fact that we had to tackle the whole roles and rights scenario. We studied the possible impl implementation of the menus to be implemented in hats implementation. As we had observed that few menu items are consistent across the board for each user. Whereas few are available to users with specific roles and rights. We designed the user we designed the screen in such a manner that the fixed item for every user that are fixed are displayed as static menu or on left side. Whereas top menu bar is populated dynamically based on users roles and rights. Here you can see the the eventual implement, implemented eventually implemented screen uh, observe the left and top menu as mentioned in previous slide. <coughs> so you can see one of the one of them is fixed and the other one is dynamic. Here's another situation. In this we had the same options available to the to every user of the system but there were differences in the operations the users can perform under the available options navigation was complex as it is very common with the green screen application We changed our general approach in a bit and made the operations that user can perform as our manuals. We recorded the navigation patterns of for each operation and uh, then presented the options on the main screen. When user clicks any option, the macro runs on the back end and performs the navigation required on green screen and user is 
reach to the screen to perform desired operation. On front end, the whole lengthy navigation is avoided and user only requires to perform the eventual operation. That means in, this increase the, in the efficiency of the user. It saves time for him. Here's the final modernized implementation. Uh, interesting, this to observe here is that instead of navigational menus, direct buttons are provided to perform the particular operation directly as the need of navigation is taken care by the implementation of macros. In this situation, uh, navigation was really complex. User has to access the screens by uh, keep on providing four, uh, four, four IDs of length four. Overall the depth of menu or the depth of the menu was large up to five levels in some cases. There were differences in the screens available to the user per their roles and rights. The solution we created for them, that menu, because menu is dynamic, uh, based on roles and rights, we created a JDBC connection with DB to, and to, to collect the menu options available to the user along with the hierarchy. Then we displayed the menu content in the form of tree by using JavaScript or jQuery. And tree menu widget was used. Uh, as user can click directly on the available menu or can also click anytime while on the screen, we play macro uh, both ways. For instance, if a, a user is working on a screen and suddenly clicks some option in the tree, the macro at the back end exits and user from the screen uh, was, was user uh, from the screen which on which it wa he was on the macro is run to navigate the user to screen he she clicked on the tree menu <coughs> as you can see here in the modernized screen the menu is looking less cluttered especially uh, there are because there are many sub levels but because of the tree menu structure, uh, the screen is looking less cluttered and many of the, the options available to the client are uh, hidden most of the time, saving space. Host screens navigated by entering four character IDs is another situation here that host screen was navigated by entering four credits to access the desired screen. Navigation uh, was not for more than three levels in green screen. Different screens were available with respect to users' roles and rights. It is the same situation as we had in the last case, but the only difference is that instead of making a JDBC connection, we used web services to get the navigational menu items in Excel. So uh, this, this is a situation that we'll discuss in detail in the implementation section of our webinar, where Im Muhammad Imran will uh, guide you how we can develop such an such a option with hats. Here's another situation, another case we resolved. There were multiple lev static level menus and uh, different for user based with respect to roles and rights. Deep 
navigation was there like up to four levels. Few options are used more frequently than the others in each module. The solution we came up with, the menus are dynamic and populated based on the roles and rights of the logged in users. So we created a JDBC connection to pull the complete hierarchy of menu items according to the users roles and rights and populated it into multiple levels of with uh, JavaScript based drop down menu. Along with that the search functionality is provided to search a certain menu option for making the navigation further convenient. Just like uh, in the Windows 7 start menu we have a search functionality. You can see the eventual screen that we came up with here. Observe the scroll bar appearing at the last slide, uh, last level you can see here. There, there are uh, some, uh, some options at the last level that are not available on the screen and arrows are given at the top and bottom. And uh, these options, all these options are uh, picked up by a web service call and they are JTBC call in fact and they are presented like this here. Now let's see another case. Multiple level of static menu was there different for user base with respect to the roles and rights. Up to four levels of navigation was there. View option, a few options are used more frequently than the others according to the module user is using. So this is the difference. Like there, are, there is this uh, most frequently used options section according to the module user is in. So the menu is different with respect to roles and rights and with deep, dev, uh, deep navigation. Uh, so the solution is, uh, and this is, uh, observe that the solution, we don't have this on the screen, so. We can see the solution on the next slide. Let me, let me okay, here you can see. <coughs> The scroll bars are appearing at the last level of the menu uh, and their menus are dynamically populated based on roles and rights. Eventual level of the menu is displayed in a floating widget with list of options from the module user is currently using. User can place the floating widget anywhere on the screen so it it is not occupying much space. He can place the widget as per his convenience. Along with that, the search functionality is provided to uh, search a certain menu option for making the navigation further convenient. Here's another case multiple level static menu different for multiple level dynamic menu in fact different for user base with respect to roles and rights deep navigation again few options are used more frequently like the last menu but the requirement changed here is that the client wants an iPad version of the menu <coughs> So there was no change in the way we pulled the data as we had in the last menu implementation but considering the space or in fact lack of it in on iPad we went for a pop-up menu that could be placed anywhere on the screen. It is hard to navigate via, via drop down menu on the tablets so the menu is provided in the form of tree and frequently used widget is provided separately on the screen. User can minimize, maximize, hide, close, drag the menu as per his convenience. 
here you can see the here you can see that menus are provided on both sides of the screens but user can hide maximize minimize or move the menus anywhere now i am handing over the mic to mohammed imran one of our finest hats developers to give you demonstration to build a menu using web service we also call him dr hats due to his expertise and firm grasp uh, over hats affairs Thank you, Asif. Today we will build menu using web service. We have tried to keep it very simple, but obviously you need to have development background to understand. As we have already discussed, that menus can be created from mapping of same menus on green screen. menus content can be picked from multiple screens using macros if menus content are dynamically changed according to user roles and rights jdbc or web service can be used choosing a menu is dependent on green screen behavior project requirement and other such variable for example in our requirement green screen are navigated using four character id and these ids are different for user according to their roles and rights ids sets are stored in database for each user type and in some cases for individual user as well so in this scenario we have chosen to use web service to populate the menu content same could be accomplished with jdbc connection as well but as on the destination we had the web service implemented so we went for web service instead of jdbc anyhow we initiate a request to the web service by providing user id and password web service returns the set of this logic need to be executed upon sign in event of the user uh, user so on the slide you can see that an xml response is returned uh, by the web service we will use xml to generate menus using this response here we can see sub system menus sub menus in parent child hierarchy for the implementation of the menu we have created a menu handler class that implements the content handler interface as the sox event are fired in the xml document it notifies our program to take appropriate actions the sox api specification primary task is to create a class that implements the content handler interface it is basically a callback interface used by xml parser to notify our program of sox event as they are found in the xml document we have to create a jsp uh, name like menu.jsp which also use javascript to generate menus menus.jsp need to be included in template to simplify the menu codes otherwise you can write this jsp code in the template too when the menu dot jsp file run it fetches the attributes of menu html which is basically a string buffer that contain the necessary html code to display the output to the user that is menu in our case if the attribute exists already menu html is print out to display the page to the user however 
if no attributes are returned sox parsing come into play it perform some action like a new uh, sox parser object name reader is created as you can see in arrow 1 a new object named handler is created from the menu handler class as you can see in arrow 2 next the content handler is set when the handler is passed to the reader the location of our menu xml object is passed to a newly created url object the xml is now passed on the reader object next a method from our menu handler class object menu html is called as you can see in arrow 3 it returns the menu html string buffer that contain all the html code generated by the class file as a result of the firing of different events the method that are used to identify the different elements of our xml are start document start element end element end document the start document method marks the start of the html code it define code to create the top menu for example creating div and table tag etc its positioning and style the start element method make use of the local name and attribute parameters from its argument when any of the subsystem is selected the local name variable is loaded with the value subsystem which correspond to the subsystems defined in the xml upon encountering this event and the attribute for that particular subsystem are fetched by the attts.get value method of sox these attributes are the prefix and name values for instance let list the prefix and name value for the account service subsystem once the elements are encountered and their attributes are fetched our class append html code to the menu html buffer this code create a menu of item using the prefix and name attribute as fetched from the xml the subsystems are composed of menus and sub menus menus are single clickable items while sub menus get expanded further into menu when clicked when the lo local name variable is loaded by the sub menu value its name attributes is fetched by the attts.get method and it is displayed in the drop down list of the subsystem when the local name variable is loaded by the menu the command and name attributes are fetched by the att as get value the menu item are also displayed in the subsystem drop down list but the command attribute particular menu item that is clicked four character id is sent to the green screen the input to the green screen generate the particular page of that menu item which in turn is transformed by head and display to the user other necessary code for formatting and styling the menu is also appended in the start element method the end element method also check for the different values of the local name variables like sub system sub menu and menus and close their corresponding list anchor and other text that were opened in the start element method the end document method marks the end of the table and div tags for the menu that were opened in the start document method this is how the menu will appear see the options at root and last level you can also build the same so this is it from my side 
प्लीज फील फ्री टू ऑक्स एनी क्वेश्चन कोई क्वेश्चन Quest, you can type in questions in the chat window, or if required, we can open your mic so that uh, you can ask your questions verbally as well. If anyone want wants to ask any question, he can type in in the chat window his question, or he can either ask ask us to open a, his mic in the chat window so that he can ask us on the call. so uh we have a question that uh, technically whether jdbc connections can be given through hats yes hats can execute uh, any java piece of code and uh, uh, we we can write some some copies of code that can be triggered on certain action like on 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 recognizing a certain screen uh, on the host uh, hats has ability to uh, start uh, executing a certain piece of code and uh, in that piece of code we can create connection with any database and uh, have data from that database or we can write a code to consume a web service call a web consumer web service by which we can uh, get the items for menus or any any other thing Uh, we have another question that hats can also make web services calls to correct yes yes uh, mr winwood hats can uh, ha there, there could be two sort of web services utilization in hats like we can create web service to extract data from Uh, any green screen application like we can create a web service using hats and hats will uh, be able to provide a web service for any other software any other application any other application that can consume a web service uh, and in that web service hats can offer any data from any any screen extracted from any screen of the host green screen system a hey, but here we are talking about uh, a web service that uh, actually the uh, hats application is consuming and it it, it is consuming it to get the uh, menu options for a certain user or certain situation so uh, in our case the, the the situation we we developed and we discussed and we we demonstrated in the slides was a situation where our code our hats code was uh, consuming a web service and that web service may have been generated on hats or may have been generated somewhere else and it it was providing an xml with the menu options and based on that menu options we were creating a hats menu okay we have another question how clicking the tree menu through javascript can have connection to macro okay like like any other uh, menu uh, 
when any other link for macro execution as you know uh, that hacks can uh, any any button can be used to trigger a macro uh, on, based on that hacks can uh, navigate to a certain screen or collect some data from host system similarly uh, a javascript tree menu can trigger the same uh, button or same same triggers the uh, macro so uh, we can uh, we discuss about uh, executing a macro in a little detail in our distance learning workshop that that uh, yasir hasan told you about in the beginning of the webinar so you can join us in that and we'll let you know how we can trigger a macro using a click or an <coughs> Let me see what questions do we have. Okay, so we don't have any other questions. We were a message of thanks and stuff. Hope we'll we we'll find you guys in. Uh, webinar sessions and trainings. This is the you can see our addresses. Uh, please feel free to contact for any queries. You can get 40 hours of consultancy free of cost from us for any kind of modernization. Uh, and let me remind you about uh, our HATS training programs. Stay tuned with us for more trainings and webinars. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the session and it fulfilled what you anticipated from with this webinar. Uh, goodbye from all of us. Hope to see you again. Thank you. <laughs>